right now on Push Girls. I wasn't gonna go to my high school. No, but now you have to go. It's gonna be like, you're in a wheelchair? What happened? I'm really nervous to go back to my high school reunion because I'm slightly embarrassed. Like, what is everyone gonna think? I kind of want to get a look at your stroke. Yeah. It's taken 17 years for me to even think about getting back in the pool. But once I started swimming again, I wanted to take it to the next level and compete. You should start training at least three to four days a week. Really? Yeah. I honestly don't know if I'm ready for all this so soon. I wanted to see if you would like to try to go out to the accident site. Driving to the scene of the accident with my dad was kind of like driving back to the moment that my life changed forever. I push beyond limits. I push beyond what's expected. Yeah. Beyond beauty. Beyond my wildest dreams. I'm a push girl. I'm a push girl. I'm a push girl. I'm a push girl. When you can't stand up, stand out. Perfect. Get those chairs out of here. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Enjoy. All right, thank you. So I didn't tell you, but I am planning to go back to Lodi. My freaking high school reunion landed on the same exact day as my accident. That's crazy. I wasn't gonna go to my high school no, reunion. No, but now you have to go. I know. My accident happened during my senior year in high school. So going back to my 10 year reunion will be a hard reminder that I've been in this chair for 10 years. I kind of feel that if I see people again from high school, they're gonna be like, oh, she's still not walking. Yeah. You have that same feeling? Well, yeah, it's kind of like... She's still in a wheelchair. Oh, yeah. She's still in a wheelchair. And then, like, those that, like, weren't present in school, then it's going to be like, you're in a wheelchair? What happened? All right, let's cheers to going home and full circles. Full circles. Full circles. Okay. Going back to your high school reunion is stressful enough, but Tiffany has to deal with her anniversary of her accident on the same day, and you know she's got to be nervous. Here, let me give you this. You got it? Yeah. Good Lord, are you sure? Yeah. I think maybe you might have to come back out. How are you going to get out the door with all that stuff? I can do it. You go, girlfriend. Good lord. Mm -hmm. All right, babe, I love you. I love you. You have fun. I'm really nervous to go back to my high school reunion. I am not the same person that I was. I was not the best teenage role model. Before my accident, I was very rebellious. I was a party girl. Like, from my small town, I did it big. I was the girl at every party. I enjoyed craziness. Drugs, alcohol, um, sex. <laughs> Everything that had to do with being crazy, that was me. I was that girl. The day of my accident was a huge wakeboarding competition, and it was like the party of my life. I mean, there was thousands of people. We were all just running around. I was completely intoxicated, and I think I took ecstasy, too. As we were leaving from the wakeboarding event, I got into a vehicle with two of my friends, Crystal and Jesse. We were on a two-lane highway, and a person that was with us earlier in that evening was coming back to the party. She was three times the legal limit. She was too drunk to drive, and she decided to pass on a double yellow and pass a semi-truck. And as soon as she did that, she hit our vehicle head-on. It was 130 miles per hour impact. The license plates were completely melted together, and we were all pronounced dead on scene, including myself. And um, they heard women in the back, and then they got the jaws of life to come and cut me out of the vehicle. I was in a coma for three weeks, and I had over 24 hours of surgery on my body. They gave my father um, a 5% chance of survival if I made it that first week. When I finally woke up from the coma, I remember my dad coming to my bedside. 
with a wheelchair. And I'm like, Daddy, why, why is there a wheelchair by my bed, you know? He goes, well, honey, you're just sick right now, and this is going to help you get around. And I'm like, but Daddy, I can't feel my legs. <laughs> and I wanted to move my legs and put myself in the chair, and I couldn't. And then I just cried, because I said, don't say it, don't say it. And that's when he told me, you know, for right now, you can't walk. But for you to be here and be alive and in our presence is the best gift God could have given us. After I got out of the hospital, it didn't take me long to get back to what I knew, which was partying and drugs and alcohol. It's what made me feel comfortable, but in all reality, it was starting to take over who I was. There was like a really pivotal moment in my life where I ended up in the hospital after partying all night long. I finally realized I was throwing away my second chance at life and binge drinking and using pain meds wasn't the answer. Moving to Los Angeles was a brand new start for me. So when I go back home to Lodi, sometimes it just brings up things that I don't want to remember. dangerous city, like all these bottles. Yeah, we're getting this. Do you think I could ask for your long arms, please? When I roll out with the girls, sometimes I take my power chair. Watch out for the potholes, lady. Normally, I push in my manual chair because it allows me to be strong and keeps me active. But when I got to get somewhere, that's when the power chair comes out. Where's the twirly glass that I always drink out of? It's in there. Sometimes simple things can be tough in the chair, but we're pretty good at improvising. So you work today. What else have you been up to, Mia? I've been swimming. However, I finally decided to look for a real coach. What do you mean real? Like someone that knows what they're freaking doing. Why, did you have someone that wasn't doing it right? No, I was doing it on my own. Oh. And ultimately, I want to have a goal. Like my goal is to be good and to compete and see where it goes. Seriously? So where are you looking? I wanted to find someone that actually had credentials either through the Paralympics or something. So I Googled adaptive swimming and this nonprofit org came up and this guy started the nonprofit work. And he works with disabled swimmers and I'm a little nervous to see, you know, what he has to say. Like no one's evaluated me or my stroke since I was 15 and I'm sure things have changed. Swimming was really important to me as a kid because it was one of the first times in my life where I actually did win. And then once I realized I could do something and actually excel at it, then I took to it even more. So I started swimming in high school and I had just made the varsity swim team. I was about to start the new season and that day that I went to get a physical done was the day I got paralyzed. Once I was finally comfortable with my body and was able to do things I did before, I didn't want to go back to something I loved before and not do it right. That's painful for me. So what's next? I don't know, I'm kind of hesitating. Call him. You call him, you meet with him, you see what's up, and then go from there. Call you make him. it sound so easy. Mia's afraid of not feeling the same as she did before when she was an able-bodied person. I can totally relate. Going back to dancing after losing the use of my legs, that was hard. This is gonna be a reminder to her that she did lose something, and I don't know how she's gonna respond. I think you're just afraid to hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. I think you should totally go for it. home reminds me of the person I once was, and it's completely changed from the person I am today. Hi. Are you exhausted? Yeah. Are you? So oh. Hi. I love you. My family has put up with so much. You look beautiful. I'm truly blessed to have such an amazing support system that is always there, no matter what, especially considering how much pain and hurt I've put them through. Are you ready to eat, little one? Oh, yeah. I just want a little one, please. I uh, will get him. Thank you. Did you want fruit, Josh? Mm, not now. 
Yep. Everybody all right? Yep. Man, it's I didn't delicious. eat no bread. The steak mm. is delicious. Oh, Dad, you're missing out. I just realized Sorry, that. I would say at the age of 15 or 16, Tiffany was a girl that sought a lot of attention. She wanted to party. She was very combative. I could not communicate with Tiffany. I would find myself getting into a fit of rage over something that I couldn't change because it was her persona to be stubborn, do what she wanted to do when she wanted to do it. What time does your reunion start, actually? The reunion starts at 6. six. Yeah. So you're going to take your time to start getting ready about 11? No. <laughs> Not at 11. No. We have a very close relationship. I'm yeah. excited for you to have your 10th reunion because I remember going to mine and it was pretty entertaining. The cheerleaders are 44 pounds overweight. <laughs> How about Purchases. the ball-headed men? <laughs> I'm one of the lucky guys. <laughs> the reality of your reunion happening and you being here, and I wanted to see if you would like to try to go out to the accident site. And I want to go and just spend some time together out there. I don't really know where the site is. All I do know is that um, there used to be a... I used to make a seven-mile diversion around it and didn't drive by it for about seven years. I didn't want to live the pain or feel the pain, and it was just someplace I never wanted to see because in my, in my heart, where Tiffany's accident happened was one of the ugliest places on Earth. I never really dealt with the fact that it was so close to losing you for so many days, and I want to go out there and try to embrace it and try to let it become something positive instead of something that has been a painful thing that I've never dealt with. When my dad said he wanted to go to the accident scene, I was kind of shocked because my dad doesn't really like to press on things that are emotional or sensitive. Sometimes I feel like the accident saved your life. Before my accident, I was very rebellious. I think it was because I was like, I didn't care. I just didn't give a fuck. I was living in the fast lane. So for my father to say it saved my life, it might hold some truth. Because the way I partied, he knew there was not going to be a good outcome. I've never really been at the accident site. I I'm, I'm, well, look at all the strength you have now that you didn't have back then. Oh, I know. I mean, you faced so many things that were so painful that now. Even though it's been 10 years, I don't know if the accident side is something I'm ready to face. Love you. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Three other people lost their lives that night, and I'm the only survivor. I don't know if that's something I can handle just yet. There's a few meets coming up. You should start training at least three to four days a week. Really? Yeah. I honestly don't know if I'm ready for all this so soon. I think got it. It was a little intimidating rolling into my high school reunion. What is everyone going to think? Oh, my god. Okay. When I knew I wanted to get back into swimming, I knew the first thing I'd have to do is find a coach that's familiar with Paralympic swimming and somebody that would be able to have the knowledge and the wherewithal to be able to train me in that way. Kenneth? I, yes, Kenneth. <laughs> Hi, it's such a pleasure to meet you, you. Finally. Yeah. Tonight, I hope to get a lot of critiquing, actually. Swimming again after 17 years. I want to know what I'm doing wrong so I can correct it so when I come back and swim on my own, that I have an idea of what to do and how to get better. I kind of want to get a look at your stroke and see what kind of technique work we might uh, work on. Yeah. It's very interesting to feel the different dynamics swimming now. I feel like when I used to be swimming, it felt like my body was like easier to deal with. I mean, it felt lighter. And now, without having the propulsion of my legs when I'm swimming, it just feels a lot more strenuous. Yeah, let's do some more backstroke again. Yeah. If you can even come down deeper yeah. with your elbow yeah. and then bend it 90 degrees. Oh, like, like that, just like to that. the side. Yeah. There are those moments where it's like, wow, if I don't do this stroke right, like, I'm going to swallow a bunch of water and maybe not make it up to breathe. Put your head back more. There you go. 
I never felt that way before. All right. I want you to, to get more of a balance of feeling what it's like to use your upper body. Okay. And this will help you do that. All right. I'm game. All right. Yep. All right, let's do it. Mia's technique needs a lot of work. It'll probably take her at least nine months to a year to get her technique down. It's easy to like want something really bad, but then also get to those moments where it's like, ah, oh, it's too much work. It almost feels like taking this step makes me realize there's a whole flight of stairs left. So, what's next? So, there's a few meets coming up. You should start training at least three to four days a week. Really? Yeah, totally. I was completely shocked. I mean, this is my first training session, and I honestly don't know if I'm ready for all this so soon. Like, I don't want to be shown up, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. The last time I was at a swim meet, I was winning medals. And now, I'm just not the swimmer I used to be. If I sign up for a swim meet and I don't do well, that will mean that getting paralyzed took something I love away from me. And I don't know if I'm ready to face that. Awesome seeing everyone, like... I'm like kind of, I don't know, I feel a little bit apprehensive. It feels like a lot of, it's gonna be a lot of mindless chatter, like, oh, so how are you, so how are you? Gina and I have been best friends since we were like in third grade. We grew up a country block away from each other, and I knew that that's who I wanted to bring to my high school reunion. Since this is the anniversary of my accident, I just wanted her support. Okay, ready? Oh my gosh, she looks so pretty. <sighs> I'm a little bit nervous to go back to my high school reunion because I'm slightly embarrassed of the things I used to do. I liked to be the life of the party, even in the wheelchair. But I was like in an inebriated state then. Like, I didn't even remember half the stuff I did. I want you guys yeah. home by 10, it's the latest. 10 o'clock. I'm worried when I roll into the reunion, people won't be able to get past the image of the drunk girl in the wheelchair. I've worked hard to change my life, and I hope that everyone else would see that. Think got it? Yeah. We're here for the reunion. Yeah. So when it's easy enough to carry the search, we just like one other guy? Yeah. Oh my god. Guys, we need help. We need help right here upstairs. When we got to the event for the high school reunion, there was like three flights of stairs, and I'm thinking, oh great. You good? Things got off to an awkward start. I'm carrying to a threshold. I can't see the steps. The threshold? Oh, is that, is that an offer to keep me? Grab my beer. Don't forget that. No. Hi! How are you? Really good. How are you? It was a little intimidating rolling into there. Like, I didn't recognize, like, some of the faces. And they're like, oh, hi, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you? Yeah. The reunion ended up being really fun. I, like, had the biggest crush on you. I've been worrying so much about how people remembered me. But everyone just took me for who I am. How are you doing today with like the anniversary? Uh, was it rough this morning? Or just like, yeah, it was. At the reunion, I saw Roger. He's a classmate of mine. And he was also a volunteer firefighter when we were in high school. And he had been on the scene the night of my accident. It's hard for me to come here and, you know, see you. I know, it was a really traumatic thing. I I'm very blessed, you know, to be alive and stuff. Oh, yeah. I know. see stuff like that a lot. It's just, you know, one out of a hundred, you see somebody you know. I know this sounds strange. I think I might have felt comforted knowing that someone I knew was there. I literally saw how traumatic it was. None of them will understand ever what it was like for you, me. I don't know exactly everything that happened the night of my accident. But then again, maybe some things are better left unknown. I want to give you a hug. All right, well. Oh, well, yeah, well. Thank you. All right, yeah. I realized my accident didn't just happen to me. It affected a lot of people. Yeah. Want a bubble bath? Oh, baby girl, yes, you are. Uh, I'm in here. Where's here? In the bondo. Hi, how are you? All right. Yeah, I just came from the pool. How was it? I don't know, kind of depressing. Yeah? 
Yeah, I met with the coach for the first time. Nice. And so, why? I think before I met him, I felt stronger in the water. Mm -hmm. And then at that moment was kind of when I knew that it's not the same. I don't think I anticipated it being this hard. And now he wants me to enter a meet. I'm feeling like, wow, if I feel overwhelmed and I feel like it's too tough, then am I going to enjoy it? Am I going to want to jump in again? Well, I'm so proud of you for even like attempting to yeah, face that challenge. A meet already? You can do it. Mia, you're stronger than you know. I honestly believe that Mia is just afraid to face that paralysis might have taken something away from her. You always put up these boundaries to avoid from taking you to that next step. That is kind of hindering you from like greatness. Signing up for the swim meet will help me take herself to another level. And it's about that time. I think that's exactly why I'm leaning towards doing the meet. Because I know that in the end, no matter how terrible it'll be, at least I'll feel like I did it. Deep down, I knew I needed to do the meet no matter what, but Ati not letting me cop out on it was the extra push I needed. You gonna let me be there? Of course! You sure? Yeah. You gotta be somewhere in here. Driving to the scene of the accident with my dad was kind of like driving back to the moment that my life changed forever. I think this is it. I was finally ready to visit the site of my car accident. It had been 10 years, and I knew I couldn't keep putting it off. It's something I needed to face. How come you wanted to take this way and not the other way? I just, I go the long way so I don't go by the accident scene. At one point in time, it was the, the worst day of my life, and definitely the worst day of your life. You know, I'm thankful every day that I still have you, and... <laughs> Sorry, but that just hit me. Driving to the scene of the accident with my dad was kind of like driving back to the moment that my life changed forever. Knowing that I hurt my family so much just from my reckless, childish ways, that hurts. It's got to be somewhere in here. But... Yeah, it's right next to the sign that says, Drive to Stay Alive. I think this is it. I just wanted to take a moment and just hold our thoughts for Crystal, Jesse, and Sarah, and my love for you and how proud I am of you. I just felt my father's pain and, and how scared he must have felt knowing that he almost lost his daughter. Is that as hard as you thought? Because it's a better day. <laughs> oh. I know, I just, I and mean, I feel for all the families, you know, like yeah. you said, Dad. How could you not? We got precious cargo back. I'm really thankful that I'm alive, you know, knowing that three other people lost their lives, you know, and three other families were really, really hurt. I mean, they lost something so precious to them. You know, they don't get a hug their child again. They don't get that again. When I knew Tiffany was paralyzed, I was devastated. But when I knew three families were planning a funeral, that's when I realized how lucky I was. So if you can hear our prayer, please know that we miss them just as much as we miss our baby walking. And thank you, Lord, for saving Tiffany for us and letting Tiffany prove to the world what she was put on earth for. That was to change people's lives. I'm proud of you and I love you. I love you too, thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful we went to the scene, you know? Being the only survivor, it's like all I can do is just try to be the best I can now. Being home in Lodi was the most emotional weekend ever. Crying, 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 and more crying. I'm safe. Thank you. But through all the emotion, you know, it, it was a beautiful thing. Driving away from my hometown, I felt a sense of peace and comfort 
and I felt really, really optimistic. When I left Lodi to move to LA, I was running away. It took me quite some time to understand like the guilt I was feeling. And now leaving, I feel there was a lot lifted off of me. I'm really happy and confident of the woman that I've blossomed into.